if I want to make an animatronic puma and I want it to be realistic, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is cheat a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go to taxidermy sources who have all sorts of uh, materials that I can use uh, as reference. Uh, for instance, this here is a, uh, a form that you can buy from a taxidermy company. Uh, and it's, uh, it, you know it's going to be accurate because you've seen beautiful taxidermy done. Um, the difference between taxidermy animals and what we do is we make them move and make them move realistically. But this serves as a very important, accurate reference uh, for what we're going to create. All right? Uh, we don't use that as a sculpture. It's just there as a reference. Uh, another thing that you can get is uh, taxidermy inner teeth. Um, anyway, uh, we use that as a, uh, uh, a reference as well. And we'll actually incorporate these plastic teeth into uh, uh, our model. Um, of course, these are a little simple in their execution and their paint, uh, and when we finish up, we usually do a much nicer paint job on them. Um, another reference that we'll use is an actual puma skull. Not an actual puma skull, a replica of a puma skull uh, that you can get from Bone Clones uh, or a company like that. It says Cougar right there. Cougar, puma, catamount, mountain lion, those are all different words for the same animal. When we sculpted this guy, we used an actual replica skull inside to be sure that we had everything accurate and anatomically correct. All right? Um, we then created a sculpture. And again, we used this as a reference, but we also made it a little bit more anthropomorphic. Okay? Uh, just tiny hints, subtle things to, to make it a little more human-like because we were going to add human-like expressions to it. Uh, there's nothing scientific about it. It's all in the art of it. Uh, and as you work on the sculpture, you get it to the point where you go, mm, how's that going to move when it moves? You know, it, it, a little more on the brows. Give it a little more brow, that kind of thing. But don't take it too much towards human. It depends on how caricatured and how accurate you want it. All right? So anyway, we make a clay sculpture. And I've got the foam latex piece already. All right? That sculpture exists no longer because we've made a mold of it. Okay? Uh, but this is what the sculpture looked like when it was in clay. But to get from the sculpture to the foam latex, we had to make a mold. Uh, we had to make a mold out of uh, UltraCal uh, because it needs to be something that goes into the oven and bake to get the foam latex. Okay? So here's our UltraCal mold of the puma head, and it's a three-part mold. So you open that up, and there's the inside of the mold. Okay, From this mold, we produce the foam latex skin. But in order to do that uh, and get a, an, an accurate skin thickness, we've got to have a core, a baking core. All right? so. Once we make the mold, we actually lay in a thickness of clay that determines how thick we want our skin to be in every place. In some places it's thinner, some places it's thicker. Okay? And that produces a core. Right? That's the core. That's like the under skull. That's, that's the, uh, the, the skeleton part, the skeletal uh, element. And those are the hard parts. Okay? And that's what's going to support our foam latex skin. Um, then we have to make a mold of the core, and that's what this is. This is our core mold. You see how complicated this is getting? Um, from this core mold, that's a mold of our core, we can produce a laid up fiberglass core or a polyfoam core. And what's nice is you can use a polyfoam core to put your skin on. And from the mold of the core, also, you can produce a vacuform buck. And we're going to show you how we're going to vacuform over this buck to get a, uh, a transparent underskull so you can see what's going on. A lot of times, you'll run a fiberglass one, and that's good to do, and it's very accurate. 
uh, or you can run a carbon fiber one, but those are more opaque and, and for the purposes of this lesson, I wanna show you uh, what's going on with a, uh, uh, a transparent underskull. And so we'll be vacuforming on a buck, that's what we call it, uh, of this. And then I have to vacuform the front and the back and then put them together to get my underskull.